And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who's guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for The Whistler, rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And now, The Whistler's strange story, Lady from the Sea. Cartwright had lived in a shadow, the shadow of a knife and a note, a note that could destroy everything she'd built up in 15 years of hard work. Yes, a shadow that even the glittering lights of Hollywood could not dispel. Myra had now reached the peak of her fame. The light of her stardom was burning brightly. Her houses in Bel Air and Palm Springs were show places, and her face was on the cover of four magazines this month. Then... Something in the morning paper struck terror to her heart. And at the same instant, a cloud crossed before the sun. Myra shivered. The newspaper slipped from her fingers to the bedroom floor. Ella. Ella. Myra. What's the matter? Why, you look like you've seen a ghost. I have, I have. What's that, Miss Myra? The newspaper, look. Look at it. Piper. There on the front page. The picture. What? Why, it's a picture of Paradise Pier. And the... The old cafe built like a ship. The lady from the sea. They're tearing down the pier, Ella. They're going to destroy the lady from the sea. memory haunted landmarks of early film colony days fast disappearing. The furnishings of the famous old lady from the sea cafe a favorite making place of the silent film era, will go on the auction block today. According to an announcement... Ella, call the studio. Tell them I won't be there today. What will I tell Tell them anything. I'm sick anything. I don't care. I've got to go to that auction. Yes, the dismantling of an old cafe built like a ship had a strange significance in the life of Myra Cartwright. To her, the lady from the Sea Cafe meant more than memories of plushy Hollywood parties and Prohibition gin. It stood for Craig Douglas, the one-time Hollywood director who once owned it. It stood for Craig's beautiful wife, Norma Douglas, star of the silent films. And above all, it brought back memories of that evening 15 years ago when Myra, then a farm girl from Montana, radiant after her first important screen role in Marie Dressler's latest picture, had stood beside Craig on the upper deck of the Lady from the Sea Cafe, overlooking the churning waters that moved under Paradise Pier. Craig? Yes, darling? Craig, did you talk to Norma? Yes. The answer's still the same. She won't consent to a divorce. Craig, I've been thinking. You could force her into a divorce. What? I mean, well, if it were known about us, she'd have to. No, no. I, I won't have that, Myra. She'd drag your name through the mud and take pleasure doing it. But, darling, I... No, Myra. No, you, you're young on the threshold of a great career. Bad publicity would ruin you. I don't care about my career. I don't care about anything. But you... Oh, darling. Oh, Craig, what are we going to do? Very little, I'm afraid. Myra. Yes? You remember the Ibsen play we read together? 
the one you named the cafe for, the lady from the sea? Uh Uh-huh. He took from his pocket a key ring. And drew a ring that he always wore from his finger. And he took a small ring that I had. These two he put on the key ring. And he said, we should wet ourselves to the sea. Wet? Yes, so he said. And with that he threw the key ring and our rings with all his might as far as he could into the deep. Myra... Give me your ring. Here. And now mine. Yours and mine. On the key ring. There. Craig, darling. Do you remember the rest of the lines? For... For she is mine. And mine she will remain. And she shall follow me... If I should come back and fetch her... As a drowned man from the dark sea. Oh, Craig. Craig. Well, here we are, my darling. You got your key? Uh Uh-huh. Would you come in for a few minutes, Craig? No, I'd better not. It's past midnight, and you've got to be on the set early in the morning. <laughs> All right. I... What? What's the matter? That's strange. The lights are... I'm sure I turned them out when I left the apartment tonight. Hello, darling. What? Norma. Your landlady told me it would be quite all right if I waited for you here, Myra. I uh, told her I was a friend. You don't mind, do you? Norma, what are you doing here? Oh, I just wanted to drop around and have a little talk with your protege. What do you want? I don't want anything, Craig. I uh, understood you wanted a divorce. This is hardly the place to discuss that again. There won't be any discussion, Craig. I've made up my mind to give you a divorce. What? What? Oh, Norma. Why not? There's nothing left between us. I was a fool to think otherwise, so... Well, you two can make your plans. Norma, I... I don't know what to say. And don't say anything, darling. Well, it's awfully decent of him. I only want you to be happy. I... I want you to know, Norma. I'm grateful to you for giving Craig up. I'm sure you'll be quite happy together, even with what you'll have left. What do you mean? Oh, that's right. We haven't discussed the terms of the divorce yet, have we, darling? Terms? The financial settlement. Norma, we can talk about that later. No, I want to discuss it right now. I want Mara to know what she's costing you, Craig. Norma, I... I don't understand. Craig what can I'm... have his divorce, Myra, provided he gives me the Malibu house, the ranch, the cafe, cars, and everything else he owns. Well, you can't. Be serious. Oh, but I am. And another thing, I'm afraid you'll have to leave the studio. The place is cluttered with second-rate directors, as it is. Second-rate? It's all you ever were, Craig, and you're not even that anymore. There are has been. You'd have been out of a job long ago if it hadn't been for me, and if you go through with this, I'll see to it that you're finished in Hollywood. I think I'm big enough to do it. Yes, I expect you are. Norma, you can't ask Craig to do this. I, I won't let him. I won't have it this way. You mean you won't have Craig this way? Money really is important, isn't it, Myra? Without it, Craig has lost his appeal, hasn't he, darling? It was just a trick, wasn't it, Norma? You never intended to divorce Craig. (laughs) I'm grateful to you for giving Craig up. You just want to torture us. Stop it. I'll never let you have him. Do you understand? Never, you poor, stupid little fool. Stop it! Myra, Myra, put down that knife. No, Myra, don't! It's all over in an instant, isn't it, Myra? The paper knife in your hand. The sudden, blind, raging lunge at Norma. And now she lies on the floor at your feet. Then you feel Craig's arm around you. Myra, give me the knife. She... She laughed at me. Give me the knife. She's dead. I've killed her because she laughed. Oh, Craig. Darling, get hold of yourself. Do you hear? I didn't mean to. I know, I know. Now listen to me. I've got to get her out of here. I want you to go downstairs, drive my car around to the back of the building, and leave it there. Oh, no, Craig. I, I can't. You've got I... to. 
I'll take Norma down the back stairs. No one will see me. Give me about five minutes. Then I want you to come back here and stay here. And I'll phone you later. And don't worry. We'll leave everything to me. Yes, Myra. Leave everything to Craig. He'll know what to do. Quickly, you go downstairs, drive the car around to the rear of the building, and a few minutes later, you're back in your apartment. Craig is gone with Myra, and he's taken the murder weapon with him. A paper knife with your name engraved on the blade. Part of a desk set, a gift of the studio workers. Yes, Craig will have to get rid of the knife too, won't he, Myra? The hours drag by slowly, and you pace the floor of your apartment, waiting, waiting. But Craig doesn't call. You're almost at the breaking point when finally, just before dawn... Craig? Miss Cartwright? Yes, who is this? Frank Collins. I'm Craig's lawyer. He asked me to call you. Where's Craig? At the police station. They're holding him for the murder of his... Murder? For the murder of his wife, Norma. No, he didn't do it. I tell you, they can't hold him. Afraid they can, Miss Cartwright. You see, half an hour ago, Craig signed a full confession. You may proceed, Mr. Kendall. (coughs) Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Douglas, you have told the court that during a quarrel with your wife at the lady from the sea cafe... And in a blind rage, you struck her several times with a knife. Yes, yes. What became of the murder weapon? What did you do with the knife? I told you I didn't know what I was doing. I I don't remember. You don't remember? Oh, now, really, Mr. Duncan? Your Honor, I object. The defendant has already testified that in a moment of uncontrolled rage or suddenly more... But, Your Honor, the murder weapon is of vital importance. Objection sustained. Mr. Douglas, just what do you remember? You struck your wife several times with the knife. And then? Then she fell to the floor. Somehow I I must have wandered outside. And after that I remember standing by the rail. And how long were you out there? I don't know. Then I came back in and called the police. And that's all I remember. Five minutes and keep your hands off the screen. Yes, yes, of course. Hello, Myra. Craig. Oh, Craig. Oh, no, no, Myra, it's all right. The trial's over and that's the worst part. Darling, 15 years. 15 years. If my lawyer hadn't managed to have the charge reduced to manslaughter, it might have been much worse. Craig, why? Why did you do it? Why did you confess? Because... Because I love you, Myra, but because you have a career before you. Not like Norma's, based on a pretty face and a few cheap tricks, but something really great. And what if you're wrong? If I'm a failure? You'll have given up your freedom for nothing. No. No, I, I would have done it anyway. Craig? Yes? The... Then the knife, they never found the knife. Now, don't worry. There's no safer place in the world than where I put it. But I've got to get it sometime. Tell me where it is. No, no. If I told you, you'd go back and they, they might be watching. But, Craig... Don't worry, darling. It's safe where it is. Quite safe. for ten years. Ten years since Craig Douglas went to prison. Ten years since his Lady of the Sea Cafe passed into other hands. The murder of Norma Douglas, his wife, is almost forgotten. 
But you've never forgotten it, have you? Even when success followed success, as your fame and power grew in the motion picture world, you have remembered. For you love Craig Douglas. Yes, and he knows where the knife is hidden. Even now, as you stand on the set between takes, the whole horrible nightmare comes back to you, and you struggle to keep it out of your mind. As you turn to light a cigarette, you see your maid walking towards you. What is it, Ella? It's Mara. What's the matter? He's here, in your bungalow. Who is? Mr. Douglas. so upset, Myra. It'll take a little time to get used to me. But how did you... I mean... Time off for good behavior. I'm on parole. Oh, I see. I'm so glad, Craig. You don't seem to be, Myra. But uh, of course I am. Why, why shouldn't I be glad after all? Well? You've changed so, Craig. You... You look so different. Yes, yes. Ten years in prison can do a lot to a man. But... But inside, I haven't changed. I still love you, Myra. Oh, darling, I felt so often how it would be to see you again to put my arms around you. please. But, Myra... Well, it's just that someone might come on. Well, someone has. Me, the man who went to prison for a murder you committed... Craig, what are you going to do? Do? Myra, don't you understand? I'm back. I'm free. Darling, we're free. Craig, don't. Don't touch me. Oh. So that's it. You're not in love with me anymore. I... I, I was when you went away. Yes, yes. You were in love with me then. When I had money, influence, when I could help you, when I could give you ten years of my life to save you. <laughs> That's pretty funny now, isn't it? What's happened to all our plans, Mara? Craig, please. I'm a star. My whole life belongs to my public. You're a phony, just like Norm. I've got to think of my public. I can't tie myself down to... To an old man? Why don't you say it, Mara? Say it. Say it, please, Craig. So you're going to let me walk out of here? You're going to thank me for ten years, pat my hand, and let me walk out. I'll see that you're taken care of. You'll have everything you need. Everything I need? You're paying me off. What's the matter, Myra? Your conscience bothering you? Or is it the knife? You... You have it? No, no, it's still hidden. With a note, Myra, a note that tells all about how Norma was killed. A note? Where, Craig, where? It will look at you out of blind eyes, Myra. Like the girl in the Ibsen play, a land creature who can no longer find her way back again to the sea. Tell me, tell me. I think I'd better go. No. Wait, please, Craig. Goodbye, Myra. Craig! There's no point in going after him, is there, Myra? Craig will never tell you where he's hidden the knife. And now there's the little matter of a note, too. A note that will brand you as a murderess. A quarter of an hour later, you walk back out on the set, seemingly calm. But inside you, the cold hand of fear clutches at your heart. The cameras roll again. There are takes and retakes, scene after scene. You keep fumbling your lines. You can't concentrate. You can't get Craig off your mind. Finally, late that evening, you drive home, spend a sleepless night thinking about Craig, wondering what he'll do. Then the following morning, while you're having breakfast, a visitor arrives. Miss Mara? What is it, Ella? There's a gentleman to see you, a Lieutenant Perez, police department. Police? Uh, have him come in, Ella. This way, sir. Morning, Miss Cartwright. Sorry to disturb you, but... This is rather important. It's quite all right, Lieutenant. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Craig Douglas. What, um, what about him? We found a code identified as his at the end of Paradise Pier this morning. 
Up at that old cafe he used to own, built like a ship. What? We believe, Miss Cartwright, he may have committed suicide. The years have rolled by since that morning when Lieutenant Perez of the Los Angeles Police made his call. Five more years, Myra, but the shadow has remained. Craig's body was never found, and there was no proof that he was really dead. Of course, as the lieutenant had explained, the tides under the old pier were swift and treacherous. Yes, Myra, as treacherous as the knife Craig had hidden. The knife and the note that no one found, unless someone should find them today. For now, it's 1948. Five years have passed since Craig's coat was found on the pier. You've had a long time to think about it, haven't you, Myra? But your thoughts have brought you nothing. Until this morning, when the newspaper told you of the auction at the Lady of the Sea Cafe. Then it hits you. That's where Craig hid the knife and the note. Somewhere in his beloved Lady of the Sea Cafe. As you hurry up the gangplank to the auction, you're quite certain that Craig has hidden them somewhere on board ship. Oh, careful here, ma'am. What? These old boards ain't as smooth as they used to be. No, sir. I remember in the old days... What do you know about the old days? Plenty men used to run a sightseeing boat right off this pier in the late 20s. Yep. <laughs> the lady's taken quite a buffeting since those days. Face cracked wide open now. What are you talking about? The lady. <laughs> That's what I call a figurehead. The carved woman up there on the prow of the ship. Used to set my sights on her in the old days. Oh, the figurehead, yes. You were uh, going to the auction? Yes, where... Over there, the dining salon. That way. Ain't much interested in what's going on myself. I'm just waiting till they get round to her. The lady up there. Gonna get her, too. What you figure on bidding for, ma'am? I don't know. Perhaps for my life. this note. You say it was inside the figurehead? Must have been. When the lady fell, part of the figurehead went down there in the water with her. I was standing here when this piece of paper fell to the deck. Huh. Dear Myra, 
I think you should know that I threw the knife into the sea on the night Norma died. I think you should know, too, that she was still alive when I carried her out of your apartment. I had to finish the job. Here, hand it over, sir. Now, that other writing there, the bottom of the page, can't figure that out either. Sounds like it's from a play or something. You mean this? Yeah, right there. For you are mine, and mine you shall remain, and you shall follow me. If I should come back and fetch you as a drowned man from the dark sea. 